Yo, what's the story? Um, recently I saw this video on Instagram and I just thought it would be a cool video to break down because there's just so much going on in it. So I had to recreate something similar and then we're just gonna basically break down all the different effects that I've used um, to pull something like this off. So if you're interested in the video, stick around. I'm gonna try condense it in a way so you can kind of flick through and I have all the chapters below so you can skip to them. And yeah, I think that's it. Um, I'll stop talking because this tutorial is going to be fairly long, I reckon. So yeah, we're going to just hop right into it. And just a quick one before we jump into it. The person who makes the vases and the plates and stuff. The Instagram's in the description as well. Unbelievable stuff. Um, both of them are in the description. Give them a look before you start doing this. Cool. Yeah, so first things first is obviously get a reference pick. Like Pinterest, like just type in ceramics or even vases. There's so many different things that you can use this technique with. I'm not a 3D modeler whatsoever, but with the use of the light tool in Cinema 4D, you can pretty much create anything that is round. Let's hop into it and I'll show you exactly what I mean. So first things first is you're gonna come up here and you're gonna toggle your active view and come into your front view. I'll just make this a bit bigger so you can see what's going on. Next thing is to press Shift V. This allows you to add in a background image, right? So throw in my reference. And as you can see, you've a lot of different toggles here, but what we're gonna do is just drop the transparency a tiny bit. Next thing I'm gonna do is just get my pen tool and the light tool basically is gonna do a full 360. So all you have to do is basically mask out one half of your object. So let me do that real quick. I'll be back in a sec. Once you're somewhat happy with how your lines are looking, as you can see, I've done real sharp edges and that's because when you come back over here, you can just hold click it and you're gonna get your spline arc tool and just make sure it's selected. And you can just basically drag it out and it just makes that a tiny bit easier um, to use. Once you're happy with how your vase is looking, you can just toggle your active view again and come into your uh, perspective camera again. And as you can see, that's what we have. Just click over here and I'm just gonna press Shift C and I'm gonna type in my late to bring that in and drag and drop the spline in. And as you can see, it does a pretty good job at building that. And you've basically modeled your vase. I'm gonna just press C on the late till and then all I'm gonna do is just come up to my polygon till up here, press U, L, and then I'm just gonna delete the top. And as you can see, we have a vase. All I did for my plate was just come up to my window, active browser, and, and there's already plate models inside of Cinema 4D. So I just used one of those. And as you can see, yeah, it does the job. Obviously there's no textures aren't on this yet, but the UVs are good to go for that as well. So now we have our plate and our vase, and now we are on to the materials. Now that we are onto the textures, I'm just gonna show you how I textured the plate. Um, if you wanna see how I textured the whole vase, I'm gonna put a video up on my Patreon along with literally this whole tutorial with no breaks in between. I just thought that for YouTube, this would just be a quicker and simpler way to show you how I've done it. Um, right, so jumping into Procreate on my iPad, obviously you can do this on Photoshop or whatever. I use my iPad just because it was hand-drawn. I just thought it would be easier. So on my iPad here, I just opened up a new canvas and I made it 4096 by 4096 and I created that. Obviously, because I'm using a reference image, you can create your own textures here. I'm just gonna insert this photo. Zooming in nice and close to the plate and then I'm just gonna make a few duplicates of this layer. And I'm just gonna hide all these layers like that and we're just gonna be left with this layer, perfect. I'm just gonna drop the opacity a bit, I'm gonna make a new layer, perfect. I already have the color selected, but if you didn't have the color selected, once you hold on the screen, you can use your color picker, and now we are good to go. So, on this image here, I'm just gonna select this, and I'm gonna just bring it up so I have a better look at that L, and I'm just gonna get drawn. I 
I have all the letters here typed out. Now I can just delete all those other layers that we don't need. I'm just gonna activate all of our layers. I'm also gonna have one layer that I used as the reference here. So this is basically the PSD that I'm gonna be sending over to my computer. Right, so once we have all of that done, we're just going to export share PSD. And now I'm just gonna save this into my files on my iPad. Let's just call it lemon <laughs> piss, right. That's saved. Now all we're gonna, gonna do is just open the Intel Unison app, go into our files, and here it is, send it over, and now you shall receive on your computer. That basically works like airdrop. I don't know, I just think that's a game changer. We are done now on the iPad, and now I'm gonna be opening up Photoshop. Right, so we have our file here, and I'm just gonna open it up in Photoshop, and as you can see, all of our layers have came in perfectly. So let's just drag this to the bottom. Now all we have to do is just match up where our letters are on the plate. Perfect, now when we hide our reference, we have all of our letters. I'm just gonna click them all, Control G, and put them into a group, and then I can just make this as big as I want. Let's just say like that, and then we're gonna hide our background, and we're gonna save this out as a PNG. And now we're just gonna make an alpha, and all we're gonna do is just add in a threshold, make everything white, and just make sure that that's inside the group. And then I'm just going to come over to my rectangle tool, and just fill the background in with a black background like that. Right, now let's just export this as a PNG as well. All we're gonna do is just open up Substance Painter and just paint that on really quick. Right, so now we have Substance Painter open and I'm just going to import our plate. When we bring that in, we have it here, perfect. Now we just wanna drag and drop those textures that we just exported out into our Substance Painter. We're gonna make sure that the alpha is an alpha and the texture is a texture, bam. First thing I did was I just gave it a glossy layer. There's like a plastic gloss here and I just gave it a bit of a warmer color like that. And then we just wanna add a new layer, click our alpha just to bring it into the alpha here and then this lemon piss texture is going to go into the base color layer. As you can see, it's not being big enough and there's a simple fix for that. All you wanna do is just come size space and turn it into viewport. And as you can see, now we have it the right size. I'm just gonna look at the reference just to see where roughly it was placed. Right, so up along the edges. So I think I'm actually not too far off here. And you can just play with the actual size here. Right, I think something like that is good. Boom, so now we have our plate textured as well. So we're just gonna go file, export textures, and save it somewhere where you know you're gonna find it. I just come down here and I usually just use PBR metallic roughness and export. Boom, now we have the textures export for the plate. Now we can jump back into Cinema 4D and start to animate this. Now that you have all your textures sorted, we're just gonna open up Cinema 4D and basically start animating. I'm gonna break down how I done the last scene, the two vases balancing, the plate coming in, and then the texture change of the plate as well. So jumping right into it, I have a vase here and I've just rotated it so it's on its side. There's a bit of movement in it and how I got this was basically just added a formula tag. Within the formula tag, I've just reduced the strength and the project time to 0.4 and these are the parameters I use. So if I was to up these a lot, you'll see that it just doesn't look realistic at all. So I think it just kind of depends on what object you have and this is gonna affect the rotation, so how much it's rotating in that time frame as well. So obviously play around with it. You can, depending on your object, you're gonna to want to kind of match it up to something that would look realistic for you. So once you have that, then you're onto your delay and all I've done is just reduce the strength to 95. So now to get that balancing vas in, all I've done is just duplicate it disconnect and reposition the vase up on top. I've changed the formula a bit just to give it that illusion that it's kind of balancing. And yeah, it's just very subtle and it looks nice. Now onto the plate. And as you can see, 
it rolls in and it hits the vase. In order to do that, I've just given this a rigid body tag and I've also given the floor obviously a collider tag and I've given this bottom vase a collider tag as well. Let's say if I hid the wind, the plate would just fall in its place there. So by adding the wind in, I played around with the wind speed a lot and then that gave me something like this. And then all I did was just keyframe the wind speed here on the point of the collision. So it goes from 19 down to zero. And then that just allows that plate just to stop in its place like that. Perfect. Let's just bake all of these. Last but not least is that texture change when the point of contact happens. So around here. So all I did is just go into my plate texture and I've just keyframed the file next frame i just brought in the texture of the next plate and i've just keyframed that again so that means when it hits there there should be a texture change and you can see that happening here that brings us into our octane viewport where we can just see if this is all working when we press play you have the first texture on vases are rolling and when it hits, that texture changes. And that's pretty much it. That is basically it for this video. I just wanted to give a brief overview of some of the techniques used within that video. Obviously, we haven't even touched the lighting, the text, the actual texturing of the vase, the scene setup, the camera setup, and there's so many different little things that I will be breaking down on my Patreon. Obviously, the project files and all will be there as well. I think I touched on a fair amount there in that little tutorial. Um, but yeah. Let me know what you think. I'm going to try and make this a weekly thing. So hopefully I see you next week. Thank you.